Good <laughs> voice, lovely. So, would you like to start on your, uh, to Steve, because I've heard all these. Um, uh. Well, we won't do them all. Well, um, well, we'll start off with the, uh, the Mr. Freeze. Tell Steve the story of Mr. Freeze. This is the first time he nearly died. This, this is the most serious of the lot, really. So, um, what it was, do you know, like, um, I don't know if your mum and dad did the same thing, but, like, they do the weekly shopping on, on like a Friday. Yeah. So when, when you got to Thursday, <coughs> there wouldn't be much stuff left in the cupboard. It'd just be like, you know, your Jacob's crackers and stuff mm. like that. So when they'd, when they'd been to the supermarket and they came back, I was like, uh, you know, what's that saying? Like a pig in... You know, I, I loved it. It was like loads of food coming in, loads of biscuits. He nearly said, what is that saying? He nearly said pig in shit. <laughs> right. Is that the saying? <laughs> yeah. Right, so, um, so yeah, all this food comes in. Thank God like he didn't. <laughs> <laughs> I know, he's in a bit in trouble. That's true enough. Because he's, he's culpable for our actions, because he's exactly. the producer. <laughs> so technically, oh. that twat's in charge, yep. go on. Right, so anyway, so there's loads of food, and I'm like, oh yeah, look at this, some chocolate biscuits, and, uh, you know, penguins and stuff. Bacon. So, and um, bacon. <laughs> Just in case, you never know. <laughs> so, um, so, anyway, my mum and dad's putting the food away. Me and our kid are like, he's already grabbed something, gone back upstairs. <laughs> it's like feral children. <laughs> it's, it's like a quest for fire. <gasps> and then they run upstairs. <laughs> it was, it, what did you sit under the bed, gnawing at some sort of pig's trotter? So, so I saw, um, do you remember Mr. Freeze Pops? I do, yes. Yeah, so well, they're kind of like popsicles, icicles. Yeah, they? but really long, like yeah, a foot yeah, long, yeah. right? Yeah. So I thought, I'll have one of them, so I grabbed it. Went for the nutritious stuff first. Absolutely. And, uh, and like my mum and dad are putting this stuff away and what have you. And I, I rip it open and knock it back. Right, straight away, just right back like Swallow that. Right, Swallow it, But it went down the wrong way, right? What, so I what was down like, your oh. shirt? <laughs> <laughs> so I, I was like, oh god, I can't breathe. And my mum and dad didn't, uh, didn't even know what I'd ate. Do you know what I mean? It went, it, I ate it so f f so quick. Yeah. And uh, I'm sort of tapping my mum on the back, going, uh, uh, she's going, oh god, you know, he's, he's choking again because I was always choking. <laughs> if it was one thing, I don't know if I've got like a small throat. <laughs> but, but I mean, even Ricky knows I can't drink that much, can I? Yeah. Do you know, or I'm eat pebbles. A, I'm, <laughs> I'm not a, f a quick drink drinker. I'd always, um, I think I'm scared of like swallowing stuff. Yeah. And uh, it was like bottle tops and mint imperials and stuff. I was always, I was always choking on stuff. Jeez. <laughs> oh, so, so anyway, she's going, oh god, what's he picked up on it now? <laughs> Drop it! Drop it! So, hit, his, hit his nose with a stick! So, I was going, oh, I'm choking. At this point, my, my dad had like, I think he'd put his, his share away, you know, his food away and he'd gone his to- His share! I yeah. love it! Yeah. He'd, he'd gone to watch like, winner takes all or whatever, <laughs> in a lounge. And I, I was in the kitchen and I was starting to like, just, I didn't care anymore, do you know what I mean? I hadn't, I, I just got to that point where I wasn't struggling anymore. You just thought I'm done I just for. was like falling to the ground. And my mum's going, you know, get in here, I think it's serious. And uh, my dad comes in and sort of starts shouting at me saying that's what you get for being greedy. <laughs> he didn't even know what I'd eaten. Well, it was, it was the moment to teach you a lesson, certainly. So he's there like that and my mum's going, oh, look at him. And my lips were going purple and my eyes were rolling into the back of my head. You look like Marilyn Manson. And, uh, so anyway, she grabbed me from behind and did that, that fireman thing. The Heimlich manoeuvre. Yeah. And, uh, you know, winded me and it came up and I was all right. What, the whole right. popsicle came flying back out? I don't, I don't, I, you see, that's what I don't understand. Because there no, was just nothing it, there. No, I mean, just a little bit, no, it swells up, doesn't it? Because it irritated it, so it went down your, this sort of like, your epiglottis, it went down the wrong way, like it went into your air canal instead of your so, throat. And it, it sort of, it, it, it f sort of spasms and that's the, that's the fear. You just got to calm it down and relax. So, so in time I would have been all right yeah, anyway. you don't, um, Well, no, yeah. you might have. So that's, so, 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 so that's hang on, one. So, but, but, so no, 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 but the weird thing is, like, for, like, three days after that, I felt like a sort of, a uh, special person. <laughs> I was, I went to school. Oh, what's I did, that? I'm saying nothing. I, I did full days. <laughs> <laughs> a special needs person. <laughs> Yeah. I went, I went to school the next three days after that. I didn't like wag it or anything. I did full days. I love that. Three days, turn over <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah. After three days, you thought, screw it. Yeah, well, did, did a quick history yeah. exam. Yeah. But yeah. have you ever had that where you've like felt like I've been given another chance here? Mm. Right, next that one. That's popsicle. That's popsicle hell, we we'll call that. Right, next one. Uh, which one's the next one? Oh, what about your paper round? Right. Can I ask very quickly, did your life flash before your eyes like they say it did? No, I just s sort of went really calm and like, I'm ready for this now. Right. I wasn't bothered, do you know what I mean? I you had no scared. regrets? No. No. Um, it was weird. It was really weird. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, the paper round one. Uh, paper round, I'd still say it's the best job I've ever had. <laughs> 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 and he 
means it. No, I really oh. enjoyed it. It's like, you know, oh. you, you, <laughs> you don't have to work with anyone else, right? Oh. So you make your own rules. Just think of that. Um, yep. you know, um, you sort of You're spreading information well, yeah, to people. Yeah, vital information. Giving a service. Yeah. And no one else is around, you know, you can just do what you want and think about stuff whilst you're cycling around on your bike. It's really good. Yeah. So, um, so anyway. Imagine the stuff he's thinking about when he's going <laughs> around. <laughs> no, I can't. Oh, so, <laughs> I'm getting in the head of a salamander. <laughs> so I anyway, I, I loved it. And even though I only got like 50p a day, right, no matter what the weather was like and stuff, I used to get up at half past four and, uh, go and do the round. And, um. Why'd you get up at half past four? Because I wanted to watch the Pink Panther at 5.30, so I wanted to get me paper round done. I said, why didn't you watch the Pink Panther? And then, and then, then he went, oh, I can't sit there thinking I've got my paper round to do. <laughs> He'll ruin it for him. Yeah. So is it a good job or not? Go so at four, 4.30 I was up, up and about, and this morning it was like winter, really bad winter, bad snow, you know, freezing cold, really windy and all that. And my mum said to me before I went to bed, she said, don't be getting up tomorrow, I'll give you the 50p. I said, it's not about the 50p. So, you know, people want the papers and stuff. <laughs> so, um... Conscientious. <laughs> so, anyway, I went to bed thinking, you know, that's it, I'm, I'm, I've told her I'm still going, so, you know, whatever. Go to sleep, get up in the morning, and, uh, put all my kit on. And I, I used to have layers of clothing on, because it was really cold. They had, like, a big anorak on, with the fur on. I had, like, waterproof pants. And I got my paper round bag. And, uh, I went downstairs to get out, and tried to open the door, and it was locked. So, oh, God, so, uh, uh, so she'd locked it so I couldn't go out, so I'm searching around the house looking for the keys. She must have hid them somewhere. I thought, oh, God, you know, I've, I've got the papers to do. So I thought, how can I get out? So I went upstairs, climbed out of the bathroom window. God. Right, and to try and jump out of the bed bathroom window onto the porch. But the problem was, I had so much gear on, I was like the Michelin man. <laughs> so I could hardly, I could hardly move as it is. Yeah. And I'm trying to get out of the window, and I, I, I'm like, trying to stretch down like that, get me foot on the, on the porch. And my bag got caught on like the hook of, do you know like how you have a hook so you can put the window open? Right, yeah, the yeah, little yeah, arm goes yeah. on. My bag had got caught on that. I was holding onto the, like the, the wall and my foot on the thing so I couldn't sort of pull it, pull it away in case I pulled it away and then fell on my head. Yeah. So I'm stuck there. Dangling. Dangling. My dad comes back from working nights. Yeah. He thinks I'm a burglar. <laughs> Gets out his gun. So, he, <laughs> so he's shouting and stuff, going mad and going, Dad, it's me. And he had to give us a hand using a- <laughs> He's heard that wily trick in Manchester before. <laughs> <laughs> he had to help me using a washing prop thing. A big stick. What did he do? Well, he said, just that hold on for your dear life and I I'll sort of push the paper bag off the hook. Why and didn't he go upstairs and sort it out? It was at that point where I was in the middle, there was nothing you could do, do you know what I mean? Mm, it's at right. that point where you've just got to make a decision. Yeah. And by the time you go upstairs, who knows what might have happened. Sure. Do you know yeah. what I mean? You've got to act there and then, don't <laughs> listen around. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, so- And you could hear downstairs, now here he is, the Pink Panther. <laughs> yeah. Dad! Pink Panther. Hurry up! Ever so pink! <laughs> oh. <laughs> so that, that was close to death, because I must have been about 30 foot in the air. Yeah. And I would have, you know, that would have been nasty for Fel. Fell to the concrete pavement. Oh. So well, and, uh, there's more. There's more to come. Should we play a record and come mm. back to this? Because he's got more. Oh yeah, no, no, no. There, no there must no, be one no, of them no. where you did fall on your head. This is the one I'm waiting for. There's got to be one. That was explained so much. Yeah, I nearly did. Nearly broke me back. Jeez. Once, my dad said, "I better can't kick me out." And I said, "I better can." And uh, I, <laughs> I don't remember this. You didn't tell me this one. You, you, no, I better can what? I was in the garden, summer's day, and uh, it was that era when, like, doing kung fu and all that was really popular. Sure. And I was, like, messing about in the garden, punching the tree and, and stuff. <laughs> and my dad said- <laughs> What a kid he must have been! My dad said, I bet you can't keep your height. Kick uh, your height? What, yeah, you mean yeah. kick as high as yourself? Yeah. yeah, so I must have been, like, five foot or something yeah. then. And, uh, I said, of course I can. So I bet you can't. But instead of doing it on the grass, I did it on, like, the, the concrete bit. <laughs> Kicked it, actually did it, I went, there you go! But then, like- Get me foot down quick enough and land oh, on you, the back. Oh, you pause to, pause to say there, I've done it. Yeah. As opposed to putting your foot back on the ground. And, uh, landed on my back and uh, I, I'd still get back trouble now. Do you? Because you say that, don't you? So, he's, uh, I'll just cut a long story short, he gave me about four or five near death experiences and he went, and the whole point of this, he went, so that's why I think I'm gonna die of something horrible, like cancer. And I went, why? He went, right, you ready for this? Yeah. He said, well, I don't check my balls. <laughs> Right? <laughs> he said, I don't like the feel. <laughs> <laughs> Carl, Carl, always check your balls. Do you I check don't yours? like the feel. Why don't you like the feel of your own balls? They just, 
I mean, you know that I don't like bodies anyway. Right. Do you know what I mean? It worries me a bit that you've got all that going on in your body, right, and your skin's keeping it all in place. <laughs> right. Stop, 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 stop. We're going down a whole other avenue of discussion. Let's play a track, let's come back to it. Oh, right, I've brought in this, uh, this is, uh, free, um, you know, uh, you'll know from the Jeans commercial. Yeah, all right now. Long time ago, yeah. all right now, yeah. But this is a great little track. This is, uh, My Brother Jack. <laughs> Stereophonics, Vegas two times, XFM 104.9, into the last hour. Yeah. And then three shows to go. That's true enough. Until we're off the air. I'm Ricky Gervais. <laughs> With him, Steve Merchant. Carl. Oh, yeah. All right. Yeah. Let's go and tell you, um, you, we, we cut short last week, weren't we? You, you had a, you had an amazing story about Neil Armstrong, didn't you? Well, we've been doing quotes, haven't we, like famous quotes. Sure. Yes. I've, you know, gone down in history. Yeah. And, um, I was saying, you know, quotes. Don't really matter. Um, <laughs> it's, it's more the situation that you're in than than the quote itself. Go so, on. like Neil Armstrong, yeah. if he'd have said, "What, um, I, you know, tie bacon round your head," I'm as happy as a pig in dust. Yeah, that would have yeah. still gone down in history as like being the thing that Neil Armstrong said, wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah. But space is driven but, in mental, probably. But, but, been, yeah. but, but, but he chose to say something <laughs> profound and yeah. meaningful, uh, to, uh, befit the situation. It's, well, he got it wrong, actually. It's, uh, uh, a small, small step for man, one giant leap for mankind, but he was meant to say... Yeah, we discussed this last week, one, yeah, yeah. showing off. Well, no, but people might not have listened last week. Yeah, it doesn't I mean, matter. I can't imagine well, people we better not, tell them every week, then. Yeah, but uh, he said, uh, he should have said, this is one, uh, sort of set for a man. Yeah. But anyway, he had a good effort, and that's quite- And, and that's, that's an example of, and, of what I'm saying. The fact yeah. that he got it wrong, but it still went down in history. Right. But anyway, the bit that, uh, and it didn't happen anyway, did it? What do you mean it didn't happen anyway? That's what a lot of people say. That no one's actually been on the moon. Ah, yes, of course. They, they filmed it in Teddington Studios. Well, they were saying something about there was shadow on the film and you wouldn't get shadow on the film and uh, there's, uh, there's all sorts of things. Are there these people that you always quote as they? <laughs> Who are they? Are, are they living in jars? Are they little fellas in jars? Look, Go on. You know. Do they appear to you in dreams? I've spoken to different people about it and there's loads of little things that if you watch that program, they that, you know, of, of them being on the moon, there is no way they could have done it. Right. <laughs> Done. Yeah. Done. Yeah. That's put to bed. Yeah. But anyway, Good. as he was getting back in the spaceship on the moon or whether it be a TV studio, yeah. he said, uh, Good luck, Mr. Croucher. Right. Have you heard this? No. And the reason he said that was because when he was a young kid and he was pl I think it was Croucher, but when he was playing as a young kid in, in his garden, he was playing baseball with his mate. <laughs> And he chucked the ball to his mate, and his mate hit the ball, and the ball went over the fence to the next door neighbour. Right, so he goes right. I'll just snip over and get the ball. And as he was getting the ball, the window was open to his neighbour's house, and he heard like the woman shouting at her husband, saying, "I'm not going to be giving you uh, a bit rude. So if you got a kid in the car or whatever, turn it down." What? Well, yeah, that's covered that. Yeah, right. Um, Genius. I'm not. I'm not. Um, no matter. How many times you ask me, I'm not going to be giving you oral sex. <coughs> the day I do that, man would have walked on the moon. Right. right. Yeah. He grows up, he gets on the moon, and he remembers all that story, and as he gets back in the spaceship, he says, Good luck, Mr. Croucher. <laughs> now, do you know, now we'll have to say, I've heard that story before, but when I heard it, the woman said, The, 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 the day I give you a blowjob is the day the boy next door walks on the moon, which makes it all the more profane Impossible. and enjoyable. Yeah, and unlikely. Yeah. But yeah, no, I've heard, I've heard the same story, Carl. Yeah. <laughs> Look how pleased he is. I love that. <laughs> right, so not only have you remembered that anecdote, which may or may not be true, but of course you've also proven the that, uh, I'll give you a never even... That kid in the garden's probably gonna walk on the moon and say something about <laughs> giant leaps. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> but, um, yeah, yeah, you must have heard the thing that it never actually happened. Yes, we've all heard yeah. it. We've all dismissed it as nonsense. <laughs> <laughs> and moved on. Yeah. Yeah. And got on with our life. Right, Carl. What? Should we do uh, White Van Man? Well, you didn't. You didn't. You didn't prepare me for that. We better play a track and then I'll. Uh, okay. it, I'll fish out the newspaper and stuff. Oh, oh this is. Uh, oh, this is a good little um, a little bootleg track here from um, uh, Meats and Poultry. Here they've um, mixed um, um, A with uh, Outcast. Right. Of course, it's great. Is it highly illegal? It is. So people shouldn't rush to their tape machines now and press okay, play. Okay. So whatever you do, don't don't record this now if you're recording. Hold on. Don't say anything. All oh, that bootlegs going into the name of. Uh, um, 
nothing, Miss Jackson, I think, by, uh, Meats and Poultry. So there you go. I do love these bootleg things, because they're so pointless, but they're so enjoyable. Yeah, it's, it's great. It's fun to do. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, they're they're, really they're, good they're fun. great. But, um, not as much fun as Wide Van Car. <laughs> Wide Van Car, absolutely. Um, do you want to explain the premise? Well, um, we take some uh, the son asks someone else and asks Carl. It's simple as that. That's the right. son of just taken a normal person, we flipped it. <laughs> We're gonna ask Carl the same questions about the week's news. Yeah, just basically your opinions, Carl, as ever. Um, what do you make of, well, obviously the big news, David Beckham's broken foot. Is this uh, a big concern for you? No, I mean, it's sad, you know, um, it's sad, it's sadder for him more than anyone, cause you know, to, to like, be in the World Cup is like the main thing for him, isn't it? Yeah. But he's still a young lad, and, uh, I don't think he'll give up, I reckon he'll still turn up. Uh, he'll be alright, and, uh, yeah, good luck to the lad. You know I like David, I'm not gonna slag him off. <laughs> what <laughs> <is> <laughs> <words>? <laughs> yeah, yeah. He says that like he knows him. <laughs> like he's popping round for drinks later. <laughs> yeah, like we tried to stitch you up. Go but, on. But, um, obviously yesterday, was it yesterday, I think, maybe th maybe Thursday, uh, The Sun printed a big picture of, uh, David's, uh, foot mm -hmm. and encouraged everyone to touch it at midday, because hoping that this would somehow, um, if we all thought and prayed together, somehow that would help his foot heal. Do you, do you believe in that? No. Have you any belief in that? No, you're going down the old, like, you're a gallery, aren't you? Sure. I know, it's, it's stupid. Yeah. I'm sure, I mean, it's nice effort and everything, it sort of cheers everyone up. Hold on, <clears throat> you believe in ghosts and warlocks yeah. and um, licking toads. How, uh, wh why, why is that any more stupid and all those things? It just, it, it's not gonna work, is it? <laughs> <laughs> all right, fine. It's rubbish. <laughs> okay. Okay, uh, what about this then? There's, uh, apparently now available 1.5 million pound apartments available on an exclusive ship which sails around the world. Yeah, it's like, uh, make of that? it's a huge thing and you just, you, you live on it and it's, I mean, in theory. How big, how big is it? It's, um, it's mental. Do it's you know like a town in the centre. Do you know how like people said that the Titanic was the biggest ship? Was that only then? They've got yes. bigger ones now, haven't they? Yeah. A lot bigger. Oil tankers are much bigger and... Yeah. No, but actual line is a big. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was it was the biggest then, yeah. Because my mum told me that there was one that that was that was that big that it had like rough areas on it. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh, 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 God! <laughs> oh. Don't go starboard. Oh God! No, but you know That's what I mean. Right. It was like we're, a, we're thinking of moving. We're seeing yeah. the captain. We're thinking of moving to a nicer <laughs> area. Oh, yeah. I mean, <laughs> I've heard they're very rough in aft. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, that's They fantastic. steal your tires. That how? ship's so big that was <laughs> rough areas. Oh. How, how big is this one that, that you're talking about? <laughs> uh, well, I don't know. It doesn't give me the spe specifications here, but they're huge. They're huge. They're huge. Um, in theory, I mean, it's, it's that thing with, um, uh, it's obviously marketing, but, um, they're gonna, um, uh, solve, uh, the, uh, um, overpopulation crisis where soon we'll all be just be floating around the sea, yeah, but. Yeah. <laughs> I can see that, because, I mean, <laughs> think about it, right? I've been talking to Ricky about it. I was open to buy somewhere in London, but there is no way in this world that I can afford it, right? Um, and you look at all the, all the wasted space, like, with the Thames, all it's doing is, like, collecting crisp packets and stuff and yeah. Coke cans, and people have to clean it up, whereas if you think, if you've got a load of boats on there, yeah. problem Perfect. solved. Yeah. Would you live on a boat? Problem solved. Uh, what's his name did it, didn't he? Uh, what's that program? Is it Berger? Noah. Right? Oh, <laughs> Bergerac? There was one where, where he lived on a boat, I think it's quite- was That it was a shoestring. Yeah, I, I'd give it a go anyway. <laughs> no, uh, I'd like to see you, um, living in, in the air, maybe in a giant hot air balloon. Yeah, alright. But, um, no, the boat thing, um, cause it, it, it is gonna get bad as well, isn't it? They're saying that the water's melting or whatever. The water's melting, the, yeah. The ice is melting. Yeah. And, and it's gonna be more life. water and less land, so yeah. in the future it's probably gonna be the way we're gonna be living, isn't it? Have you seen that film Waterworld? Nah, I don't fancy it. Because yeah, that, that, that sort of predicts that, yeah. What, are they saying that the ice thing exactly. is melt? Exactly, yeah. But at the same time, um, I was thinking about this a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> if you get, I mean, I think I read that like, a big chunk of ice, uh, fell off one of the ice, uh, what do you call them? Caps. Ice caps. Something like, the, I think they said it's the size of the Empire State Building or something. Right. It, it snapped off and went into the water and it's melted. And they say, oh, it's bad news, you know, that, that something that size is melting. But the way I look at it, if something that size falls into the water, it's like a big ice cube, and it's gonna freeze it up again. Do you, are you with me? Not no. really, Carl. Go on. Right, you get a giant ice cube, yeah. the size of the Empire State Building, yeah. stick it in the water, yeah. it's gonna make, uh, that. it's gonna stick back on again, isn't it? 
Well, no, uh, only if it again. freezes up again. Yeah, well, it will freeze this, up. The water's well, going to get cold again because you've just put a giant ice cube in the water. Well, so when you put <laughs> when you put an ice cube in a drink, the drink doesn't freeze, does it? No, the ice it's melts. Not, if you put one the size of an Empire State Building in your glass of Jack Daniels, <laughs> it's going to make it freezing. <laughs> It's not going in a glass of Jack Daniels, it's going in the ocean. I know, but I'm, that, you see, I'm using my fables. Imagine the world. <laughs> Use your brain instead! Imagine the world, <laughs> imagine the sea, yeah. like the Arctic or whatever, as yeah. a glass of Jack Daniels. Okay. A big ice cube falls into it. Yeah. It freezes, it melts back on again. So he said, we're all right, I don't know why everyone's <laughs> worrying. <laughs> God. Thank God for that, I was getting panicked. Oh, fine. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, no, you're right. Yeah, that will happen. <laughs> Should we play some more music and then come back to work? Yeah, this is, this, this is this better is, than this ever. Is, this is dynamite, this week. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Hi, Nina, on XFM 104.9, we're doing White Van Carl. Got another one there? Uh, well, it's just uh, another, your thoughts really on uh, the Queen Mum's uh, very British send off that she was given this week. Yeah. What do you make of all those people queuing up to see her? Did you think that was incredible? Right. Well, what we said last week, you know, there was a- I, I don't quite understand why there was so many people there, um, who were, like, getting really upset. Do you know what I mean? Really upset, crying and stuff, and, you know, you can lose someone who's, r like, related to you, and you don't- you don't cry like that. You sort of sit there and you think back to what you did with them and stuff, and- and then that's it. But, um, <laughs> the Q thing, it was- wasn't it, like, miles long and stuff? Yeah. It was, yeah. Right, I was sat watching this with Twelve hours there. queuing. Yeah. It never got to and 12 hours. It did, but it that did. was the estimated time. No, but how you know. long is a queue when they're just like, you know, walking along? Think how far you can sort of like, st you know, stagger in 12 hours. Incredible. It's been ridiculous. God. Yeah. But again, you know, if they want to do that, it's their time and that, isn't it? And it's, yeah. It was at the weekend, so they, they could have. It's not as if they got out of work to do it. No. You know, I mean, they use their own time, so good on them. But I thought, right, what they could have done, remember when I studied Che Guevara? Yep. Yeah. Right? Um,. And don't be offended by this, it was just an idea, because they did it with Che Guevara. Remember when they cut him up? <laughs> yes, they, they cut him up, yeah. What was the reason for cutting him up? Uh, well, they cut up Che in order to try and, um, would they, you, you, you told us that they were gonna send bits of his body to Fidel Castro and trace other people, wasn't that right? Uh, uh, as, as a warning, wasn't it, though, to all the, the people, like, one to... Yeah, uh, my, my understanding was that they cut him up in order to, um, so they could bury him in different places so that there'd be one no shrine, there'd be, like, no, what, not one place that you could go to in order right. to... Well, to a little bit like that, a little bit like that. I've, like, I six can cues, see where this is going. Six cues, and it's like, number one, you can, you know, go and pay respect to her head, or whatever. Oh, God. No, but think, I just was thinking the way of, of speeding it up. I'm not having a go, I'm not, because they haven't done it, so it doesn't matter. God. But, they did it with Che Guevara. Yeah. Everybody would have felt like they've got close to her. <laughs> and it would have speeded it up. No, I mean, but I can understand Can I just say that genuinely, Carl is not being disrespectful here. This is his best idea to- to cut down the queues. So don't phone in, he's not suggesting we should have done this, he genuinely well, he is. is. It's, well, but I mean, he's not doing it to be nasty or wacky or- or, you know, he thinks this is a good idea, so- Can just I just throw a thought to do with Che Guevara, who was like a, a powerful man who did a lot for the world and what yeah. have you? Yeah, yeah. And- have you, Are you aware that I, I feel slightly responsible for this because have you heard of the quote, um, a little knowledge is a dangerous thing? Yeah. Okay. Steve, next one. No, just, just, just a very quick question. I can understand those that have queued for 12 hours to see the head. <laughs> I'd be a little bit annoyed if I got there to find a toe. I'll tell you what, though. I'll tell you what they could do without chopping her up. They could put about nine queues, each could see each hip she had. <laughs> That's true enough. Because she's- she's had about nine of them. Yeah. So it'd just be, uh, uh, if you want to see the whole body, it's a 12-hour queue. If you just want to see a couple of the hips. Here's another suggestion for you, I just <laughs> thought, right? <laughs> but instead of everyone queuing to see her, why not put her on a trolley? <laughs> And wheeler past everyone else. Running. So uh, yeah, yeah, you could have you could have some students on rag week and they can combine <laughs> it. But like when they're always pushing a bed. Yeah. You know, they could just run it along oh. the queue. No, that'd, that'd be, be fantastic. That, that'd be disrespectful. <laughs> right, as opposed to the chopping up. So sure. Right. But just just an idea. Just I apologize now. Anyone yeah, yeah. offended? Anyone offended, I'm sorry, but yeah. okay, finally, um this is more frothy. Liz Hurley lying low apparently at Elton John's house to try and avoid the press now that she's had a child. That's a good place to go to avoid the press. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Elton John's out. Yeah. Everyone seems to be friends with Elton. John. Yeah, why every did, did, why did he pop into Elton John's house? What is he running some sort but of? But it was like when Robbie Williams was a drunkard and a drug addict, he went to Elton John's. Yeah, yeah and it was the other fellow that went there as well. Was someone to you know to recuperate and uh, quite shoulder the crime. 
Is he, is he giving out false yeah. fa passports? But I don't like, know if people have seen his history. He's not the man of, you know, I mean, I know he's cleaned himself up now, but, you know, or maybe yeah. that's it. Maybe he's got this kind of insight into uh, how to deal with celebrity. Yeah. What well, do you well, think? I think he's just genuine oh. mates with him. I think he's just like a friendly bloke. I think she's been doing too much lying low in the first place. That's part <laughs> of the problem, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> High five, Carl. That was a genuine joke from Carl there. And he's so proud of himself. Look at his little face. Too much lying low. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was no, my man, Carl. I agree with you. Why, why can't she just go around to her mum and dad's or something rather than Elton John where everyone's looking? Yeah. 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 <laughs> That's the point, isn't it? Yeah. So that was good, yeah. Very good, oh. yeah. Right, what music we got? We got, uh... Bit of Flaming Licks. Flaming Licks, excellent. There's the, the classic Race for the Prize. Should have been a big hit, never was, sadly. Sadly. The Flaming Lips and Race for the Prize. Just playing that rip for everyone who emails us thing. We get a lot of emails every week, but uh, obviously don't really respond to them because we're very lazy people. But uh, we obviously appreciate it. And I play that particularly for uh, Claire, who's emailed in saying uh, her friend Sarah Prosser would like some Beatles. We're not going to play the Beatles this week, but uh, Sarah apparently loves us more than words can express. More than Carl could express. <laughs> Absolutely. I'm going to stop you there. Do you want an advert? <laughs> Spread your love. On XFM 104.9, I'm Ricky Gervais with me, Steve Mitchell. <laughs> and now it's Carl's bit. It's Carl's, it's the re education of Carl. He's like Liza Doolittle. And now he's, uh, he's coming to, or Lawnmower Man, if you've seen that film. More like Lawnmower Man, if you've seen the film, you'll know what I mean. Um, uh, and uh, his homework was to just study quotes, really, on, on happiness and stuff and general well being. He's not a big happiness uh, quote fan, are you, Carl? Not really. So what have you done? You've, you've you've come up with something, haven't you? Right, yeah, I told you, right? Because a lot of these are just things you say every day. They're nothing special. <laughs> um, so what I'm doing- Well, you say them every day. <laughs> well, yeah. the sort of things you come out with and you don't even think about it, do you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. They're, in, they're on the TV all the time, people on the radio are saying these sort of little quotes. Sure. And, um, what I've done is, remember that program on Channel 4, Faking It? Yeah. Where they got some, like, posh kid to be on a door and all that. What I've done, <laughs> I've, um, <laughs> Imagine if that was the pitch <laughs> for the show. Dear Channel yeah. 4. You're just gonna get yeah, a bucket on a door or something? Yeah, yeah, come in, come Carl. in. Yeah. TV yeah. producer. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, go on. So, what I've done, <laughs> this little book of quotes, uh, happiness quotes, I've, um, I've picked two that are real. Okay. And I've made one up. Alright? <laughs> and we've got a guess. And you've got a guess. Okay, then, go on. Well, I'll tell you what, Rick, why don't we, when we've heard them, we won't confer. No. You'll write down yours, yeah. A, B, or C, and I'll yeah. write down mine, and we'll sure. see how okay, it Okay, Carl, off you go. Right, and just because I'm l I'm looking at this book, it doesn't mean I'm actually reading. No, I know. Don't no, worry, no. We're, we're clever. No, no, no we, we know. We, know. we can't see. Yeah, Can yeah. I call my bluff? Yeah, okay. go on in. Nothing is worth more than this day. Okay. Yeah. Meh. Yeah. All right. Yeah. The way I see it. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh God, my head's gonna burst. No, hang on. My head's gonna burst. No, hang no, on. this might not be Carl's. Oh, it might not be. How do you know I haven't tweaked them a little bit? Yeah, good okay, point. Good enough. point, no, good point. The way I see it, if you want the rainbow, you gotta put it with the rain. Yeah, okay. okay. All right. All right, yeah. Okay, hang on. Come on. Cat food. <laughs> Cat food, go on. It stinks a bit. <laughs> but, if you don't put up with the smell, the little kitten will die. <laughs> Steve! Steve! I don't know what to say! <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what to say. Imagine him faking it. Imagine their faces when he says that and they're going, oh my god. Oh. Carl, play a song, mate. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we'll have to confer on this one. <laughs> 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 Bye, Blair. Well, that, that's just amazing, Carl. Just read them again. Two, two were real, one was fake. Go on in. Right. Uh, first one. Nothing is, uh, nothing is worth more than this day. Excellent. Next one. What does that mean? Well, cherish, cherish yeah. now, cherish your yeah. time. Okay. Because you, you, uh, you can't get it back and, yeah. you know, I swear um, I saw it. carpe diem, whatever it is, seize the day and all that. Okay. If you want the rainbow, you've got to put it with the rain. Yeah, of course. Yeah, rough with the smooth. You know, it's not all plain sailing, but, you know, rainbow's beautiful, but it comes because of the rain, which you might not like, so yeah. make the most of everything and, yeah, yeah. good. <laughs> Cat food doesn't smell good, <laughs> but if you don't put up with it, 
then the little kitten will die. <laughs> right, no, Carl, that is a good effort. Now, that one's yours. I mean, obviously, right? Right. Right, no, no, but it's a good effort, right? I mean, it slipped seamlessly into the others. Yeah. I don't think it didn't. <laughs> no, but it's, it's good. I mean, we knew it, we knew it was that one, but, um, what I will say is, it's good, but what you don't know, maybe subconsciously, is, I mean, it, it, it's n very similar to, uh, the putting up with a rain and the rainbow, but well, that's good. Why do you think that? Well. What, what does mine mean? Well, uh, even, well, even though it smells bad, it's good for something. Right, so see, I, a, I didn't look at it like that. What, what did you look at? Uh, I, I kind of thought... Was yours more specifically about cat food, <laughs> generally? Because <laughs> <Right. laughs> you know normally they like, it's an analogy. Yeah, or a metaphor for something, you know, much well, bigger. Well, no, the way I... I mean, Do it. Dolly Parton, who I think did the rainbow, rain thing, she wasn't specifically concerned about weather conditions. No. It was a sort of general idea. Yeah, it was all about yeah, life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Existence. Well, that's, that's what I've done. Go on. Okay. What, I've what, used what, an everyday thing. Yeah. And put it with today's problems, right? Go on. So, like, um... My girlfriend, yeah, um, she might like to go shopping for clothes. I hate it. Right. But because of her, because I love her, I put up with it. Ah, oh, that's nice. Yeah? Yeah. So, you, you love that little curtain. You can't stand the smell of the stuff you gotta feed it, but because you love it, you go, well, you know, I'll put up with this just for a few minutes and then I can, like, squeeze its head later and give it a little- <laughs> Sorry! 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 Can we- can we go back? You know, stroke its head and stuff. Oh, right. Yeah. Sorry, it was a bit of a slip, was it? <laughs> Squeeze its little head. <laughs> no, yeah. yeah. Yeah, well, that's just the thing that I do with cats. <laughs> Put it in a bag and drown it in a lake. <laughs> I can feed it and I can throw it against <laughs> yeah, the wall. Exactly. So you, yeah. didn't, you didn't see it like that, did you? No, that's very good. So it's about love, is it? It's about putting up with the bad things yep. for, for, for something you love. Yeah. Well, that's nice. But, but, but Carl, you seem now to be convinced and rather smug that you've tricked us and that you've fooled us and that we didn't understand it. Well, well I say that's your fault, not ours. <laughs> No, it's not, though. I mean, look, that man in Forrest Gump, he was a bit of a nutter. <laughs> <laughs> a bit of a nutter! And he, he came up with the Life is a Box of Chocolates thing. Yeah. Now, if that was in this book, you'd say, oh, yeah, brilliant, you know, good bit of work. But if he was sat here doing the show with you, yeah. you'd be taking the mickey out of him. Sometimes I feel he is. <laughs> No, but, Carl, I could, I could, in fact, if people are out there, we're too lazy, could you write down everything Carl's ever said? Cos I think we could publish that. Yeah. He said one today, he saw my, um, uh, salamander, it's not a euphemism, <laughs> he saw my salamander and it's just sitting there in the tank. Your exotic pet. Yeah, and he's worried about there's not being a lid on, and he said, I went, what were we worried about? He said, he said, well, he said it sits there for 24 hours a day, Obviously planning to get out. <laughs> well, he's got nothing else on his mind, and it's, the, the daft thing is, he has actually got the like the lid ripped up a little bit. Like mm -hmm. he's got nothing else to think about. <laughs> and I'll be looking up there. Yeah, and it's going to get out. But what's the worst that could happen? What's Carl? it thinking? What do you think it's thinking? This salamander. It's got its eye on the DVD player. <laughs> 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 I could have eaten me down the market. Well, oh, oh, God! Are they, are they dangerous? Can I just say something? Are they dangerous? I think the salamander's thinking exactly the same things as you. I mean, to look at you, you've got the same expression on your face. You know what I mean? Uh, you're dressed in green as well. He's, you've got a little round sort of Hamburglar type head, <laughs> like the salamander, very similar. And yet, you, you know, you, I think, and you bonded with it, didn't you? you yeah, were... but I, I probably would have tried to get out, but my little paper round bag would just hang on. <laughs> <the smaller. laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Listen, um, can we have more nepotism on the show? I know Go that on. we uh, did that earlier with the uh, attention centre. We, we have my uh, housemate. You remember I was working out with him last week to uh, Helen from Big Brother's dance size video. That's just frightening. Yeah, we, we we've we've kind of let that slip a little bit. I've got to be honest. But anyway, he's joined this band. They're called uh, Fujia and Miyagi. Slightly difficult to pronounce. But uh, anyway, this is a track that I think's been getting some play by uh, Nick Luscombe and John Kennedy on XFM. They got a gig this week at the Pool on Curtain Road. Uh, that's 18th of April Thursday. Uh, let's play it. Can I just say I've got a fridge freezer for sale. Four hundred quid or near. <laughs> For Gia and Miyagi, performing live uh, Thursday the 18th of April uh, at the pool on Curtain Road. Admission is free, Rick, so you'll, I imagine you'll be heading down there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I will. Well, I've enjoyed this show. Yeah, it's been a good one. It's great. It's been great. Carl, any more? Oh, tell that story that you were telling me about your dad when he was driving. Well, it's just that you were talking about, well, I, I mentioned Forrest Gump. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, the Forrest Gump types. When my dad was a, uh, when he was a taxi driver. Yeah. You used to have to, uh, sort of do y do your bit for the local area. Oh, God. By taking the, uh, the yeah. forest, the forest yeah. gun people yeah. to, to Blackpool. 
Yeah. Is that what they're called now, the Forest Gump people? <laughs> Is that what the, uh, the organisations that support them are? <laughs> <laughs> for them to be referred to a as mini bus with <laughs> exactly. uh, life is a box of chocolates.com. Yeah, exactly. well, oh, right. scum type. Uh, it yeah. must be, so you work with these people. It these was pe a, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, the people with learning difficulties. Yeah, 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 and they used to get fired. Coming home must have been a busman's holiday. <laughs> 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 so he got five of them in the, uh, in the cab. Yeah. And they had to go to Blackpool, and four of them were really good, you know, behaving themselves, didn't mess about, weren't fighting and stuff, but there was one. It was just causing loads of trouble and he couldn't control him. Oh and what you've got to be able to do with people like that, you don't want them to get stressed out because it's, it's not good for them. It stresses them out and, and you could end up with a bit Thanks, of- Thanks, Dr. Carl. <laughs> you could end up with a bit of a riot on your hands. <laughs> so, so he thought, I'll nip this one in the bud right now. And he pulled up just on the outskirts of Blackpool and um, he took the one out that was causing problems and put it in a wheelie bin. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Oh, I'm sorry. I apologise. He oh, did what? God. Oh, He God. did it for the good of the others. He put oh. in a wheelie bin. He was having a good time. He thought it was one of the rides. <laughs> Could you stop saying it? <laughs> Him. Yeah. He, he, you know, he was having a good time, and, and he, once he calmed down, my dad went back and picked him <laughs> up, and he, he was fine, he had a good what, time. What, he left him in there the whole time the others were in Blackpool? No, he left him there, not, not the whole day, probably about an hour and a half. <laughs> in a wheelie bin? In a wheelie bin. Why couldn't he get out? Because, like, his arms were trapped on the thing, <laughs> one of those, one- What, he tied him up? No, do you know, like, when, because he was a big fella, and, like, he, he managed to get him in so his arms were down the side like that, so he was, he was a bit trapped. Wasn't and he screaming and crying and stuff? He was making a bit of no noise, but it, do you know what I mean? What you feel so <laughs> <if you> right. <laughs> well, but anyway, that's, I didn't really want to talk about it, he just brought it up because of Forrest Gump. Did, did you, did, do his, you know, family know about this? Is this the first time he, they'd have he, heard about this? He didn't get asked to do it again. Because <laughs> <Well, laughs> he, he had another he had another problem similar to it where he had a, a little minibus <laughs> and it was his job to take a load of old women to the bingo hall and yeah. it was miles away and um, he took him there. There was no problem. About about ten old women in a in a minibus. One of them was causing trouble, <laughs> <laughs> so he pulled over. It. <laughs> no, right? So he took him there. Uh, Everything's fine. He dropped him off. They had a lovely night. Yeah. Right? They had a lovely night. Won a bit of cash. Coming back, it's a bit of a late night, and they all started moaning at him, going, "I want to be dropped off here. Take me there. I want to be dropped off first. I've got to get up early. Blah blah. You know, <laughs> my husband's expecting me. I'm already late. Take me here first. Take me there." And he just pulled up. <laughs> in the middle of nowhere to get out. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he made them get out and they all called for taxis. <laughs> they charged that company who was meant to be taking them home in the minibus and he got the sack. Jeez. Well, a similar sort of story. You can't be dealing with it when people don't sort of just calm down and like solve the situation. Yeah. They're just all like, I want to be dropped off first, take me here first, take me Yeah, so he acts like a madman. <laughs> 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 This looks good. Oh, that was All right, great. We've got, uh, we've got to crack on, haven't we, really? We've got Says uh, so much. Yeah. Yes, uh, Nick Drake, a song for the ladies this week from the album Brighter Later at the time of a city clock. That's Goodbye. it. Goodbye. Yeah, Goodbye. See you next time. Bye.